Hey folks, I'm Brendan, he's the Falconer, and you're watching the Overqualified Henchman. Batten down the hatches and man the head cannons. It's time for the shipping manifest, Captain America Civil War style. For the uninitiated, let's start by answering, what is shipping? Those of you already in the know, feel free to skip ahead to the bit where the wigs come out. Simply put, shipping is the act of imagining and supporting the idea of characters being in a relationship. Now before you start saying that sounds like a weird thing for weirdos, Betty or Veronica? Angel or Spike? Jack or Sawyer? Did anybody really think that Ross and Rachel were any good for each other? Scully and Mulder? I want to believe! And if anybody out there still thinks that Xena and Gabrielle were just really good pals, see me after class. We need to have a talk. If you've ever had an opinion about an on-screen romance or tuned into the next episode just to see if character A finally made a move on character B, congratulations, you're a shipper. There's as many ships as there are fans, but I'm going to break different types of pairings into a few broad categories to make it a little easier to wrap your head around. First off, we've got canon ships. That's canon with one end, not two, as in things that officially happened in the source material. So an example might be Princess Leia and Han Solo. After their respective character arcs and a lot of flirting, we finally see them get together on the big screen making them a canon pairing. Mo shipping though happens in our second category, which I like to think of as canon supported or canon adjacent. This is the category for every unresolved will they won't they. Every bickering pair that always seemed one good argument away from playing tonsil hockey. Every especially close friendship that seems like it could probably be read in a different light. These are the pairings that require you to read between the lines or imagine a few scenes happening off camera and not surprisingly they are highly subjective. So in this case we might say Princess Leia and Lando Calrissian. I mean hey we know Lando was interested. Leia's got a thing for scoundrels. Eh, could have happened. Some of these pairings do eventually become canon, but for the most part, this is where we enter the realm of fan art and fan fiction. That brings us to our third broad category, non-canon ships. This is the category for pairings where about the most support they're going to get from canon is that time those two characters were in the same room together. This is where we start getting into what-ifs and alternate universes. Another important fandom term, usually shortened to AU. Continuing with our example, let's say Princess Leia and Boba Fett. Like what if the Rebels had hired Fett to rescue Leia from the Death Star? They bond over shooting stormtroopers and a mutual love of disintegrations. The only justification a non-canon pairing needs is that those two seem like they'd be cool together. And finally, that brings us to what are affectionately known as crack ships. These are the ships that frankly don't need to make sense. Prepare to have your minds blown. Princess Leia and Superman. No, no, think about it. They both had their planets blown up. They both got a strong sense of justice. It totally works. It's also pretty common to enjoy multiple competing ships involving the same character, in which case your favorite is called your one true pairing or your OTP. Bottom line, if you can think of it, somebody ships it. Because if two actors have chemistry, hey, they've got chemistry. That brings us to Captain America Civil War because that latest trailer is showing nothing more than the world's most epic breakup. Tony, when I see a situation going south, I just can't ignore it. Sometimes I wish I could. You know, sometimes I want to punch you in your perfect teeth, and your rugged jawline, and your adorable button nose. <laughs> this doesn't have to end in a fight. We can still be friends. Uh -huh. Iron slap! Now that they're not hanging out anymore, all of their friends have to pick a side and it's super awkward? Obviously things get pretty emotionally charged in that trailer, and it's easy to imagine there might be a romantic element adding fuel to the fire. So let's start breaking down some of the many, many pairings that that trailer brings us. First off, we've got Steve and Tony, aka Stony, aka Iron Cap, aka Take Away That Suit and What Are You? Naked. Cap and Iron Man both have strong personalities and strong convictions, but the Avengers always kind of work best when they work together. They're kind of the parents of the team. And when mommy and daddy fight, it's always the kids that suffer. Obviously the competing ship is Steve and Bucky, aka Stucky, aka Winter Captain, aka Winter is Coming. Yeah, okay, I'm making some of these up. Bucky's the only person left who remembers Steve before Captain America, and that's huge for Steve. They've got so much history, and everybody loves a childhood friends become lovers romance. How can we resolve this conflict? Well, one way would be Steve, Tony, and Bucky in what's known as an OT3. OT3s are always a good answer to a love triangle, but I don't really see it working in this case. Tony doesn't like to share. Now you've got your diehard Steve and Sam shippers. 
Falcap, or Tony and Rhodey, Armor Amor, but it's not all about those guys. In the trailer, we also get to see Scarlet Witch and Vision fighting, which is interesting because in the comics, those two were married for a long time. They had kids, but the kids turned out to be the devil, and then Wanda had a psychotic break, and you know, not everything from the comics necessarily needs to be in the movies. Civil War also gives us Black Widow and Hawkeye on opposite sides, breaking the hearts of all the Clintasha shippers out there. Well, hold on, movie Hawkeye is married with kids. Yeah, it's cute that you think that matters at all. Personally, I actually prefer Clint and Natasha in a platonic pairing, otherwise known as a bro TP. Maybe the best example from the trailer of how shipping works in practice though, is that one of the most popular pairings coming out of that is actually Black Panther and Winter Soldier, AKA to Chucky. Understand that right now we know exactly two things about the MCU Black Panther. One, he's played by Chadwick Boseman, who is, let's not joke, a super handsome dude. And two, in basically every shot we see him in in that trailer, he is trying to kick the tar out of Bucky. We don't know the exact story yet, but Bucky, what did you do? Do not mess with the King of Wakanda. But that's all it takes to launch a ship. A few seconds of footage, emotions running high, and the suggestion of an interesting story. Thanks for watching. I'm planning on doing more episodes of The Shipping Manifest in the future, so let me know what you thought. Remember to like and subscribe, and drop me a comment down below letting me know your favorite ship from the Civil War trailer. Man, all those heroes fighting heroes is exhausting, though. Glad we don't have to worry about boom, 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 boom. Until then, keep on henching.